an original MCM production. Dave Murphy, the Vice President of Marketing and Communications at Marquette University, will introduce our speaker. Dave? Thank you, President Dan. I'm kind of intrigued with that Northwestern Mutual opportunity. I can see a lot of people with hard hats on. So um, I'm excited, too, to uh, present our speaker today. Uh, Mary Miss is an internationally renowned artist and founder of Call, City as Living Laboratory. For more than three decades, Mary has reshaped the boundaries between sculpture, architecture, landscape design, and installation art by articulating a vision of the public sphere where it's possible for an artist to address the issues of our time. A recipient of multiple awards, Mary has been the subject of exhibitions at the Harvard University Art Museum, <coughs> excuse me, Brown University Gallery, the Institute of Contemporary Art in London, the Architectural Association in London, and Harvard University's Graduate School of Design. And this isn't her first time here in Milwaukee. She was working on a project back in 1988 uh, for the Milwaukee River Walk. Trained as a sculpture, sculptor, her work creates situations emphasizing a site's history, its ecology, or aspects of the environment that have gone unnoticed. So Mary has collaborated closely with architects, planners, engineers, ecologists, and public administrators on projects as diverse as creating a temporary memorial around the perimeter of Ground Zero, revealing the history of the Union Square subway station in New York City, city <coughs> excuse me, or turning a sewage treatment plant into a public space. So Mary's here today to talk about an exciting initiative entitled Watermarks an atlas of water in the city of Milwaukee. Developed in collaboration with the Broad Community Consortium and based in Marquette University's space at the Global Water Center, Watermarks proposes to transform the city of Milwaukee into an atlas of water where point-by-point -point mapping of water-related topics occurs at the scale of the city. Marquette University's Haggerty Museum of Art will serve as the institutional home of this interdisciplinary community-based art project, which will raise water literacy through collaborative programs and projects activated by arts, science, engineer, citizen teams from multiple universities, water-related institutions, and governmental organizations. So I'm excited to present Miss Mary. Miss, Miss Mary Miss. It's a name that can even confuse a computer. Uh, uh, I'm really happy to be here today, and I, uh, it's such a great chance to meet all of you and talk to all of you. I especially want to thank Marcia Saylor, who uh, came up to me when I came to visit the city a couple of years ago and said, would you come back to Milwaukee and, and uh, do a project? Uh, but after spending some time coming up with a concept, uh, Susan Long Henry and Amelia Layden, with Polly Morris's uh, help, uh, gave us a home. We needed that. And so we're really so happy to be connected with Marquette uh, in this initiative. So I have a question for you all. How many of you have been to Rome? I thought quite a few. Well, uh, when you're in Rome, uh, you see aqueducts, you see fountains in many forms. I've spent a good bit of time there walking the streets. So you have the things that are really grand, like the Trevi Fountain or the fountain at the uh, base of the, 
Spanish steps or the, if you go up on the geniculum, there is a beautiful fountain up there uh, that's taking uh, water from one of the aqueducts. But then there are a lot of smaller ones, um, smaller fountains where people now mostly wash their cars. I think it used to be a place where people could get water for their animals or things like that. Then also you keep going down in scale and you start seeing very beautiful uh, stone drains that are in some of the old cobbled streets. And I've been thinking about water and really doing projects of wa about water for some time and it occurred to me that Rome would be a totally different place if you didn't have all these indications of how water was flowing, of it, it's celebrated time after time. It makes the city what it is. So when I was asked to come back to Milwaukee, it was about doing a project to celebrate the city's engagement with, with water. And we've developed a concept that I want to tell you about that will give you a sense of we're calling it a water atlas, but how can we, throughout the city, point out all the different aspects of water? The things that have to do with natural systems, that have to do with infrastructure. Uh, there are just so many stories to be told. Keep thinking about the stories part of it, because at the end of this, I want to uh, ask your help and a question uh, that, I'll, that I'll have for you. So. Um, I wanted to give you a little bit of sense of how a project might evolve in the future. Uh, I was in Indianapolis and I was asked to do a project. When you see this City is Living Laboratory title, that title is really coming from an initiative that I started about 2006, thinking about how artists and designers could help make sustainability in all its aspects, social, economic, environmental accessible to people? How do you get people engaged in their own communities with these really pressing issues? So in Indianapolis, I went to, uh, started with the Indianapolis Museum and we looked at a six mile stretch of river. The river, as opposed to your lake here, is almost invisible. So we said, how could we do a very modest six mile stretch of point by point markers? So we that decoded that river and made it more apparent within the city. So we did this, this kind of really simple thing, taking the idea of the Google map pin, we decided to make it materialize and actually put it on something we wanted people to notice. Then we put a mirror in front of that with a red mark and with a name calling it out, calling out what it was that you looked at. But then there was also a dial-up number that you could call and listen to somebody give you a one-minute description of that stormwater outfall, or of that fish hatchery, or of that historic site. So by walking that six-mile stretch of the river, you got to see uh, different, uh, all these different points called out to you. And so I said that I wanted it to be catalytic. And you, you know, artists say things like that. Ah, I want to change the world, I want it to be catalytic. But actually it was. I was collaborating with a wonderful scientist at Butler University, and he came back to me and said, let's apply for a National Science Foundation grant. So we did. We got that $3 million grant to do a project on all the tributaries to the White River. And so we located, we uh, spent time trying to figure out which were the best locations. And then I developed an, a concept, and I, I wanted to imagine each of these locations as being like a sparking point that would get people to go out and, and explore some aspect of the river. So this is how I start out. It's just a, a concept, just an idea. Then I would fool around in my studio with that, with an image that emerged out of that, and then get you know further on. But the idea was that there'd be a central point that kind of told you what those, what the topic was at the site, with uh, these kind of balance beams leading you out to uh, the site. So 
each of the five sites looked at a different aspect of water. It looked at water as a resource. It looked at the habitat. Another site looked at habitat. Uh, another site looked at infrastructure and the river. I worked with a game designer because we wanted to introduce these topics but not overwhelm people with uh, too much information. Everybody has an iPhone now. If they really want to know what the name of that squirrel is, they can look it up on their iPhone. So it's like giving people enough information to be interested but not overwhelmed. So uh, one of the things we did with the game designer is, and a writer and a naturalist, in this collaborative process was come up with a series of prompts. You saw it maybe on the ground, I, my pointer won't work here, but there are these uh, small black discs and they get reflected in the mirror. And the mirror, so that you, it's a game already, you can only read these by looking into the mirror. And they ask you to explore different aspects of the site. Each of these sites was really different. One is right next to a highway. Another one was right next to where a stream disappears into a tunnel. And you get to see the relationship of a natural system and infrastructure. So the other point of this was that we wanted people to be, be realizing their own roles in, uh, in these uh, issues in these places. So we made a pedestal at the center so that whoever visits and steps up on that pedestal gets to be the primary actor, uh, gets to look up and see themselves in the center of the mirror, uh, gets to be the statue on the pedestal, so to speak. And then over this next two years, while the project is ongoing and supported by the National Science Foundation grant, there will be programming to involve the communities, mostly fairly stressed communities where these are located, but trying to involve the communities in these issues. And that's become one of the most interesting things to me now, is this process of engagement and programming. So um, we're coming back to Milwaukee, and the thing that I have to stress here with this project is how important it is to think of what we're doing, creating this water atlas, as a joint effort. This has got to be a community effort to make this happen. There are wonderful organizations that have been working with communities doing different efforts, like the Water Commons or the, the uh, Nature Center, what is it? The, uh, Urban Ecology Center. Uh, there are such uh, important programs that are going on that are al already in place that we hope to be able to partner with. But uh, I was here. Uh, it wasn't 1988, it was 1998. Just a decade difference, but these decades keep adding up these days. It's kind of shocking. I just had a birthday. I can't believe what, what happens. <laughs> but, but we're all happy to be here and able to celebrate these uh, things. Anyway, in the late 90s, I came to Milwaukee and worked with Mark, Mark Ernst and Paul Lorich, two local architects in a firm, and developed for the uh, historic Third Ward a river walk. And I saw what the existing river walk further uh, up the river was like, and I thought, here's a chance to really get people down on the water. But at this time, it was very interesting. It wasn't that long ago, but there was very little research about uh, urban issues in regard to water. Uh, there's a wonderful scientist who I've been lucky enough to work with called Stuart Pickett, who's been working in Baltimore for the last since the late 90s, really studying how uh, water is affected within cities, not just in farmlands or in uh, uh, kind of more rural areas. So the, one of the key things with the Riverwalk project was not only to get people out on the river, but to show people how water comes off the city and how it needs to be cleaned as it comes off the streets and buildings of this city. Unfortunately, you don't always get what you want. So most of those parts of the project were eliminated for budgetary reasons, and that often happens in projects that, are, that <laughs> artists are involved in. But at least we, you, as you walk along that wooden river walk, you still get to see how deep the river is or how wide it is. Those were things that we were able to call out. So here I am looking at this city, being reminded of, at, you know, of how essential water has been to its history, to 
you know, all parts of whether it was before it was settled the, uh, by Westerners, you know, uh, the people who were living here it was essential uh, to the Native Americans in this area. It was, it's been essential to the earliest settlers, to the industry. And now it's got a chance to kind of uh, have a very different role in the city, and many people are talking about it in, in different ways. So as I thought about this, I thought, how can we start something, and where do we start it? And the only place that really made sense was uh, the Inner Harbor. I kept thinking about, because I was interested in all the 30th Street corridor and all these different neighborhoods that are being uh, looked at and, and you know, people are trying to understand better ways forward. Uh, Kevin Schaefer and uh, Gassan Corbin have been incredibly helpful to me, driving me around, taking the time to show me things in the city to understand how much concrete has been removed. So that made me want to tell that, tell those stories. Uh, so I, I was thinking, you know, we've all seen diagrams like this that call out different aspects of a city. And I thought, what if we could really make uh, a, do a full-scale diagramming of the city where we could use some new structures, some existing structures, to uh, tell all the pieces of the story of water in the city. So one of the things I was showing Kevin Schaefer when we first uh, met was that I had done a proposal for a project in New York that was just wishful thinking on my part. It was for an exhibition, and there are these four stacks of one of the power stations that's directly across from the Metropolitan Museum of Art, but it's in uh, Long Island City. And I said, what if those four stacks could show you how you're doing with your uh, trash, with your waste uh, uh, collection and uh, recycling? How about the, uh, looking at the air quality, uh, looking at water quality? And Kevin looked at this and he said, well, you could use our stack uh, at the, uh, MMSD plant, and I, my eyes kind of, you know, really? Well, now Kevin's getting more tentative, so we have to convince him it's a really good idea. He didn't think I was going to take him up on it. So we have this vision of thinking, okay, let's imagine that these markers could appear at various areas in the inner harbor, but that that first one becomes like a giant weather vane for the city. We know about your flame and the coloring of, that changes uh, with 1930s technology to let you know what the weather is going to be, but technology is really different now. What if this stack could be programmed in such a way that it is a weather vane for the city, that you get to see that it's going, there are going to be light showers tomorrow, or there's going to be a heavy downpour? This information is really important to the MMSD because it gets them to think about how they're going to activate their water, water storage systems, whether to release water, whether they should, and if they were lucky enough, have the, uh, the collaboration of the whole city in using a little bit less water so that their system wouldn't be over, uh, overrun, overwhelmed at the time of a heavy rain. So we're really excited about this as a possibility. And in this next year's period of time, when we have the support through the uh, Haggerty and Marquette University, we're going to be looking closely at how we could do this, how we could make this into a weather vane for the city. Um, but uh, then I, there are other things that we would like to do at ground level. We were calling it Walk a Blue Streak, and how could we take people from the MMSD facility and the Global Water Center along 2nd Avenue over to Greenfield, where the UWM uh, Water Science Center is. Uh, so we've been looking at possibilities, and how do you get people under those bridges uh, that uh, the trains are still going over. It's like gates have been put down blocking people. So we're thinking about that. 
But the most important thing is that we don't want this to just stay at the Inner Harbor. The Inner Harbor is just the starting place. We want to imagine this as something that moves throughout the city. So just to you know, show you some of the, we're looking at those hard-edged uh, rivers that are going to be greened in, like along the Kinnikinnick in the near future. Uh, uh, looking at a wonderful pro project in the, your lower left corner uh, that was done at the University of uh, Wisconsin, UWM, uh, by Jim Wasley, showing how water can be taken uh, off the roofs and made into a, a, a rain garden. Uh, we are, we're thinking about other projects that could be done by other artists in the future that would get people to think about how many times a day they cross water by crossing a bridge. You guys have 350 bridges here in Milwaukee. I mean, that's an amazing number. You're constantly going over water. How can we get people to appreciate that? But really, it's like the beginning of a story. We want this ripple effect to go throughout the city. And we really need the partnership of people like you to make this happen. But my question for you, I know you, I hope you'll have some other questions for me, but one big question that I have for you to start thinking about and letting us in, know about, where are places in this city that are important water stories to be told in terms of your own neighborhood where you live? What issue is it that's most important? Is it a, a historical site that we may not know about yet? Is it a piece of infrastructure that's really amazing? Is it that the city has done something already to improve the water in that? Is it that there's a problem in a particular area? So um, my email address is studio at marymiss.com. Mary Miss, that's the easy one. You can remember that. Studio at marymiss.com. If you can start letting us know about ideas you have of places. We have wonderful people, historians that we're talking to, scientists that we'll be collaborating with. This is just the first step. But remember, it's not just my markers. It's that every time there's a marker, there will be a project by an artist a Milwaukee artist adjacent to that that helps you understand something about that water and, and how it's uh, important to every single neighborhood. So do some of you have uh, some questions for me? Okay. Ah, geocaching. Um, uh, this gentleman might be able to explain it better than I can, but uh, there are locations uh, that you have to find by uh, using coordinates. You get to that place and you leave uh, a mark, and, and sometimes you mark your own booklet uh, to show that you've been to that place. Uh, and people collect, see how many of these points they can find. Uh, so it's, it's really, it's something that, it's a kind of a scavenger hunt of a different era. Treasure hunt, yeah. Yes. That neighborhood, I forget what it's called, but we've seen old photographs of slides going down into the river. It was really, uh, it's, you know, a wonderful vision. And I think the idea is really to get people interested and activated so that that can be possible. It's like, how do we make each of you, each of the citizens of uh, the city, a vessel to kind of carry this idea forward? I think that's, that's what we are trying to think of doing. Yes, uh, Lilith is part of our advisory team and we'll be working very closely with uh, all of them in moving forward. But, you know, I have to say, change seems so hard. Uh, this uh, medallion that I'm wearing is actually from my New York project. It's called Broadway 1000 Steps. And I came up with the title because a, an ecologist Told, had said to me, it takes a thousand small steps to destroy an environment, and, but a thousand small steps can bring an environment back again. Well, you know, you think that, you know, it's so hard for change to happen, but for me to come back after doing the planning for the river walk and see that part of downtown and what has happened, I can't believe it. So the inner harbor is such a big, a uh, big piece of the city and its future is so 
uh, interesting and compelling, and um, it seems like almost an uh, unsurmountable project at this point, but I have faith in Milwaukee. I think uh, you guys know how to get things done. Um, the funding is something that we're going to be working on as we move forward. We've been lucky enough to be sponsored uh, in the early stages of the funding by various foundations within the city, and this next stage being sponsored by Marquette. But fundraising will definitely be an aspect that we'll be working on as we move forward. The project has different levels. We are, you know, our intent is to start with the stack, then to work on Greenfield, then to work on the connection between the MMSD along Second Avenue to the Green Greenfield uh, piece. So we're going to take it piece by piece. We have a three million dollar budget that we're that we have as a working budget currently, but we'll take it one step at a time. Well, thank you very much for having me. I really appreciate it. Thank you again for your presentation. We certainly appreciate it. Thank you.